Well, hi there, Wright Road Community Church. This is Pastor Bernie again, and this is session three of our discipleship series. So discipleship three, where we'll be looking at the idea of reading the Bible. Now, I introduced this last time in lesson two on using the Bible. And I'm drawing a distinction between studying the Bible academically and studying the Bible personally, devotionally. The last time I talked about using the Bible in a daily basis, using the Bible by reading it, remembering it, and reciting it. Now, in that last session, I made a comment that was not correct. I said that one of the things that we will do when we read the Bible, devotionally, we will discover theology. And I said that theology is not a word to be afraid of, it's simply two Greek words, theo and logos. Theo being the Greek word for God, logos the Greek word for word. I said in my previous session that theo is Latin. That's not correct. I don't know why I said that, but I know that theo is Greek for God. And so when we put those two words together, theo, logos, it's God's word to us. God's word is him speaking to us personally and inviting us to a relationship and sustaining that relationship through the written word that points us to the living word, Jesus, and we engage with the Holy Spirit. I want to continue to build on that first component that we looked at last time, reading the Bible. And I'm focusing on the devotional reading of the Bible. The word Devotional comes from the word devote, which means it's a love relationship. When we're devoted to somebody, it's a love relationship. So as a follower of Jesus, I want to read the Bible devotionally as part of my love relationship with God through the Holy Spirit and through Jesus. And so there are certain components to devotional reading. And before I touch on those, I just want to make it clear that I'm not saying that we do devotional reading and not do the more academic, intentional pull of text apart studies. I do that all the time, but I do it for Bible studies, I do it for sermons, I do it for education, I do it for information. Devotional reading is more for inner transformation as we know Jesus more and more. And what I'm going to suggest to you are five different elements of devotional reading that we need to embrace and be a part of our way that we read the Bible engage with the Bible in our daily time with Jesus. And so the first thing I would suggest to you is find yourself a simple text, a simple Bible. And what I'm suggesting by that is a Bible that doesn't have study notes, doesn't have footnotes, it doesn't have commentaries or cross-references. Use that kind of Bible for your study. This is about devotional reading reading the Bible with Jesus as you are in Jesus. So I find it helpful to just find a text. It's just a straight, simple text. I find that I'm not distracted. I'm not pulled into other areas to start studying the Greek and the Hebrew and all that. I want to focus on reading the text with Jesus so he might speak to me. So that's the first thing I do and suggest to you is find yourself a simple text. And that may include finding a translation that reads nicely and is in a more contemporary version, translation. And so when I do my study of scriptures for sermons and Bible studies, I use a more technical Bible like the Holman Christian Standard Bible. But for devotional reading, I use the New Living Translation. It just reads differently. It reads personally. And so I encourage you to check that out. The second thing I want to suggest to you that in reading the Bible devotionally is to develop a systematic approach to reading the Bible. So the Bible is a one volume, it's a single book, Bible, but the word Bible means collections of books, Biblia, a library. And so we have 66 books. And what I hear a lot of people saying, well, I don't like reading the whole Bible, I get stuck or I really don't like the Old Testament. Well, let's think of it this way. I'm a big fan of the Lord of Rings movies. I love the book, there are three books, there are three movies. 
well, it wouldn't make any sense for me to say, well, I just like to watch the third one because that doesn't give me the sense of the whole story. We need to remember that the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is God's story to us. I remember when I was in high school, it was interesting, the high school teacher, who apparently was a follower of Jesus, said, we're going to be studying world history, and remember that history is not just human history, it's his story. And that's interesting, because the Bible is his story to us, and his story helps us to know about him. And so I want to encourage you to Find a way to read the Bible systematically in a way that helps you. I have a way that I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But what it happens is you begin to remember and recall the different chapters, the different events, the different characters, the different things that happen in his story. And you begin to see his narrative. A narrative that has a plot line that is the cross of Jesus Christ. And so... That's what I encourage you to do that, to develop a systematic way of reading from Genesis to Revelation. Now the third element that I would encourage you to, to embrace is the word savor. Now, the word of God is described in many times in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, in the prophets, as being sweet like honey. And so, in order to get a sense of that flavor, we need to savor the morsels of God that we're digesting. And so that means we take time. We take the time to read the scriptures. It's, this is not fast food. We're not, I'm not talking about McDonald's or Burger King. I'm talking about going to a fine restaurant and enjoying the candlelight dinner, enjoying each morsel, just taking your time to enjoy the meal. That's what we should be doing when we read the Word of God. And it's as we take our time and we read systematically and we keep reading, we start to notice patterns. I remember when we were studying the scriptures at seminary, the professor of Old Testament scriptures said to us, we're going to be reading the scriptures, but we are not going to read any commentaries. We're not going to read any footnotes or cross-references. We're not going to read anybody's writings about these books. We're going to Look at the fish and eat the fish. And it's as you do that, you begin to notice things. And those are the things you want to jot down in your journal, in your notebook. That these are things that as you are enjoying the meal, as you savor the Word of God, you begin to see patterns and principles and priorities and, and so on. Those are things that you want to remember. Those are things you want to put in your notebook. And those that become the things that begin to transform you. Now think of... If we're, if we're eating a healthy diet of scripture and not treating it like fast food, it's going to have a positive effect on us inwardly and outwardly. So I want to encourage you to savor the word as you digest it in your daily readings. The next thing we want to be reminded of is that the point of all of this is that we want to see Jesus. Think of it this way. You're having a meal with Jesus. He's sitting with you. He's beside you, but he's also in you. The written word revealed by the Holy Spirit point to the living word that Jesus. Remember Jesus said in Luke and John, all scripture points to me. So part of the devotional reading as you are devoted to his word about him, you start to see Jesus. You start to engage with Jesus. You start to have conversations with Jesus. You are spending time with Jesus. And we want to pursue that. It's in that capacity that we can begin to experience his transforming grace. And that brings out the, the fifth element, and that is, this is a spiritual engagement. Reading the Bible devotionally is about engaging with the Holy Spirit who will lead us and guide us. You know, the Holy Spirit gave me an approach to reading the Bible systematically, and I will do that, and through that he teaches me and shows me. But in the past week, the Holy Spirit said, okay, I want you to start reading and savoring and digesting First and Second Peter. So he leads me through that process. And every morning I've been enjoying eating First Peter and Second Peter, digesting it. And he's showing me some things. And in it, I'm seeing different aspects of my relationship with Jesus. And in that, the Holy Spirit 
teaching and transforming. And that reminds me of the scripture. Reminds me of the scripture from Second Peter, not Second Peter, Second um, Timothy chapter three, where it says, "All scripture is inspired by God, God breathed, and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete." and equipped for every good work. It's in allowing the Holy Spirit to breathe into us the written word that we become more aware of the living word and we begin to be transformed by those two things together so that we become more like Jesus. Just as the Holy Spirit breathed the written word, he'll take that same word and breathe it into us that we might experience more and more of Jesus and grow into the fullness of who he is. And so the, these are the, the five things, getting a simple text, reading it systematically, savoring the Word of God, seeing Jesus, and allowing the Holy Spirit to move. That enables your reading of Scripture to become devotional and an expression of our love for the Lord. So I want to encourage you to pursue this and to investigate it and allow it to become something that shapes your prayer time and your reading time with Jesus. If you want to learn more about this approach and other approaches about reading the Bible, I would encourage you to consider the 2-7 um, life series that we're running at Rice Road Community Church. Life, the not, not life, but the 2-7 uh, life series, it's about growing in our relationship with Jesus in the family of God. So check that out, and we'll look forward to seeing you at that, at that sometime. And be encouraged as you grow in your devotional reading with the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your written word revealed by the Holy Spirit. And thank you that the written word points to the living word that is in us, that together we may be conformed into the image and likeness of Jesus. I ask, Lord, that you'd help all of us to develop a devotional approach to reading scripture, an expression of our love relationship with you again, Lord, so that we are conformed and shaped into you. Be glorified in our pursuit of you. Be glorified in our service of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.